You're gonna get told off. You're not gonna go to Harrods. He drive us anywhere Mommy tells him to go. If I cut my finger, she usually says, is it OK? And then she makes it better. With just one in ten mums staying at home to raise their kids, more of us than ever hire professionals to help with our families. If it's something that you want done, you can get somebody else to do it. I've never changed a nappy in my life. But who does the poo bags, Leah? Our nanny. Now there's a new generation of childcare experts. They call me the potty lady. Is that trendy? When we've got female operatives looking after the children, he refers to them as ninja nannies. <laughs> but if you want the best, be prepared to pay for it. I would expect to be charging two and a half thousand pounds. Family would be spending a million per child. If money's no object, you expect your staff to be perfect. A client can be very demanding. The nanny and the, the maid has to be so ugly. Actually, they're all demanding. We all have an opinion on it. Perhaps what do we need to raise our children? I'm not sure that I would want to give so much of that precious thing to somebody else. Anyway, I don't want to argue with you. We said sorry. This is how the posh parent I'm not ashamed to say I'm too posh parent, no. East London. Chauffeur and bodyguard Mo is about to start his day. I'm out the door about 6.30 to be at work. 8 o'clock, 8.15 the latest. I'm working class. I work for upper class. Driver Mo works for 34-year-old fashion designer Nina Naustall, who lives in a £7 million townhouse in London's Chelsea. If you had a mum and a dad, they can't do everything. If we didn't have stuff, mommy's life would be so difficult. I don't think there is a big taboo about using stuff today. With three children, Nina spends £200,000 a year on parental outsourcing. You can have three nannies for one child, so two tutors a day, just to make sure that they're up to date with, with the homework. Chefs and butlers, three for drivers. One of my things in my job is to look out for Nina's kids. I'm there to take them to school. If they're going to go anywhere outside school hours, I've got to take them. You know what I mean? You don't know who's, who's out there watching, you know? You hear stories every day. Today, you know, if it's something that you want done, you can get somebody else to do it. I wonder if you could help me. I'm calling on behalf of Nina Nastor. And your name? It's Faye. Our personal assistant's name is Faye. And she arranges play dates if anybody's coming to our house. There's birthdays. Noah has piano on a Wednesday, science club on a Thursday, Lego therapy on a Friday, karate on Friday, and Arabic with the girls on a Saturday. She is uh, definitely part of the morning routine every day. Is it possible to make an appointment for a full body groom, please? We have seven chihuahuas. Simba, Princess, Sharky, Diamond, Snow White, Goldie and Cinderella. For most parents, getting ready for the school run is the most stressful part of the day. Nina has help. Mo is our driver and he takes us to school and all the places where we've got to go. Goldie and Cinderella have come along for the ride. What? 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 We're going to go to Leah's school now. Leah's school now. You sound Australian, Leah. Leah's school now. He's East London. And the East London people speak. Not very similar to English. English people speak more posh. <laughs> Dogs. It's the hair. Goes over. Leave the dog. No, we're not allowed to take no, the dog. No, you must allow the next time. Having that help gives me time to be me, and it gives me time to do the things that I want to do. Bring your hand more into sort of that side. 
you choose to have hired help in the home, there are agencies that claim they'll find you the perfect candidate at a price. Good afternoon, Annie and Butler. David speaking. How can I help? Nanny and Butler is an international agency that specialises in placing staff in the homes of the rich, from super nannies with PhDs to bodyguards. This is some of our clients, obviously, like skiers, like swimmers, like... They talk me through about, you know, some of the things that you'd really like this, this nanny to be able to do. Boss Paula Diana has an appointment with a client in need of help. Did you already find the maternity nurse? Absolutely. And actually, now I need your help yeah. <laughs> to find the best nanny as well. A client can be very demanding. I'm moving back to New York at the end of this month. Usually, I spend 70% of my time in the States, between New York, Dallas, Miami, Palm Beach, uh, San Francisco, um, Los Angeles. Actually, they're all demanding. Of course, they have to be creative and yeah. with a good background and just love your yeah. daughter. I would say many mothers, they prefer not too beautiful nannies, we'll say. The nanny and the, the maid has to be so ugly that my love doesn't even have to get distracted once. <laughs> you know, quite fat. <laughs> Paola's job is to try and find Francesca her perfect nanny. Never use too much makeup. Never wear glamorous things. Not even if you're going on a yacht, you know. Don't highlight, you know, your beauty because you you will risk to lose a job. When I'm not getting an interview, <laughs> I actually am usually in running gear, like leggings. Leggings, never, please. They're too sexy. I know. <laughs> forbidden. <laughs> Really? Yeah, leggings, yeah. Sports leggings? Uh, it's, it's, no, it's a no. <laughs> I think Francesca would prefer someone maybe in her 40s or 50s. I mean, she wants to be the princess in her house. Uh, what's, what's wrong with that? For this position, they're offering, do we talk about salaries? Yeah. yeah. 1,500 per week. A top nanny can expect uh, an exciting and beautiful lifestyle. They would um, pay for you to, you know, use the spa or the gym or, you know, you'd be free to use all the facilities in the hotels. They fly with the private jets, they ski with the family, and they meet uh, celebrities, they meet uh, head of states, they meet royals, so they can really live uh, a good life. Sandbanks in Dorset is one of Britain's most expensive places to live. Amanda Jenner bought her house with the profit from her new business. Families use me for potty training their children, um, more the wealthy families. Wee Wee doesn't go in the trousers, does it? Where does the Wee Wee go? Potty. In the potty, good boy. People's reactions, they just think it's a crazy thing to have a potty training expert, um, and they call me the potty lady, which I actually quite like. I think it's quite good that I'm the only potty lady in the UK. Down they go. <gasps> You're going to do a wee. That's Holly's potty. It would take most children about three days. I'd normally charge about £2,000 for that. She has an appointment at one of Sandbank's most exclusive salons. Good morning. You're very welcome. Thank you. Amanda is getting ready for tonight's launch of her Potty Training Academy. A potty Training Academy? Is I that know. Where babies come and learn how to... That is. Now, I go out and um, parents use my services to go out and potty train. Are you well, joking? Yeah, they call me the potty lady. So, yes, can you make me look glam? OK, no. OK. I might go to sleep. So, I'm intrigued. Why would somebody hire you to potty train their child? Because, I don't get it. Because they can, and they've got the money to do it. They call in me, or they call in a sleep nanny, chef, a nutritionist, yoga teachers. It's mad, isn't it? If you were super rich, would you, and you had a child now, would you pay for services? I think it's the most precious thing in my life. And I'm not sure that I would want to give so much of that precious thing to somebody else. Fair enough. I think they're missing out on an awful lot of pleasure. With a waiting list of up to a year, Amanda is expanding her potty training empire. Would you use my services? Yes. Oh, and are you potty trained? <laughs> <laughs> That's the main question. Well, I've got four children and I've never changed a nappy in my life. Never. How did you manage that? that? I just got an extra. I got an extra nanny when I got asked to do so. Oh. <laughs> 
each to their own. I, I don't judge anybody. You know, somebody else, somebody might need four nannies because they can't cope. You know, just because they're living in sandbanks and they're affluent doesn't mean that they're not fighting the same stresses that, that every other that. people yeah, do. Yeah, right? so. yeah. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me on the launch of my Potty Training Academy. There's a big problem worldwide with potty training, and especially in the UK, but no more, because my Potty Training Academy is here. In her Chelsea home, Nina is hard at work. The former model runs a luxury fashion label and has showcased collections in London, Monaco, Vietnam and Bulgaria. I'm not sure they choose it for a cover just because it doesn't suit their audience. The, oh, yeah, I know. I would say it's a lifestyle brand. I just want to try it That's the favourite. That's... I think that's the most likely to be picked as the cover. It's everything from couture, ready-to-wear, accessories, foreign leather, bridal, and, you know, then you're ending up in the kids' wear, where, for me, obviously, that's reflecting back me being a mom, also using them as my main models in my, my photo shoot. These ones are catalogues from my kids' collection, which, obviously, my children uh, model for me every season. I think in the way of their manners and behavior and... Their looks that they got from me, of course. No. <laughs> I think, yeah, you could say they're catalog kids, in a way. With a holiday to Monaco booked, Nina needs to sort a couture wardrobe. The children are having a fitting with their personal cobbler. Come on. We're going to try special shoes. Handmade children's shoes cost £175. Yes, Do you want to try this? this one? It's nice, Noah. Maybe for Monaco, make something colourful, no? We can be as crazy as we want to be. For most parents, kids' clothes shopping is a chore, but Nina employs a children's personal shopper. So is that Noah? Who is Leah? Who's the eldest? Is that you, the gorgeous marabou coat? And you must be lovely Alexa. These are people that um, are short on time but have a lot of money to spend. I think they're sport with lots of love and attention, these children, but they're, their amazing reality is a wonderful, cocooned world of opulence. It's about being spoilt with really gorgeous things. You can put some what should we have underneath? My pink dress. Oh, you want a pink dress underneath? I want the children to have a fab time, pick out some really beautiful pieces. Is that your style? Is that trendy? Yeah, but let's try what we have first. Probably the most extravagant thing I've bought for a child is a £5,000 fur coat, which they were delighted with, a lovely mink coat. At home, there's one duty Nina doesn't delegate, choosing the Chihuahua's couture for their afternoon walk. This is the dog's wardrobe. We have a mixture of Roberto Cavalli, t-shirts. you want to put a bow tie? Diamond is wearing one of the Gucci fur jackets. I think it's going to be a bit small now. No, it's not. Dressing up is a big part of the household. The kids, yeah. They love to go out, go to the park. OK, let's go. This is Cinderella and Simba. They're a little bit naughty. So who does two bags, Leah? <laughs> I think it's easier if you have someone to do it. <laughs> right, Leah? Yeah. Yeah. Go get it poop. Even with a team to help. <laughs> no, 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 no. Things can get out of control. British families now spend more on childcare than an average mortgage. Lucy Challenger runs Polo and Tweed, a luxury domestic staff agency that charges thousands to find the perfect candidate. At Polo and Tweed, we get clients that come to us from around the world and they're looking for all types of staff, um, from childcare, maternity nurses, nannies, through to butlers, housekeepers, chauffeurs, chefs, and the calibre of staff that we have in our books is of the highest. 
Well, Heidi is flying in today from Austria. She is coming over for her work, but also to meet with me in Mayfair and to interview prospective nannies. She's very spiritual. She leads a very sort of yogic, zen life, but she also wants things done the correct way. It's a bit more difficult than most families because we have very specific dietary requirements. I'm vegan, my husband and my children are vegetarian. And we have a vegetarian house, so there's no meat, no fish, kind of even allowed through the door. We're quite fanatical in that way, a bit like a religion, I guess. We basically say to the nanny, there's no sweets, no chocolate, no cakes. My worst nightmare would be a nanny that comes in and wants to cook kind of ready-made nuggets and chips, fast food, or take them to McDonald's. I would be devastated. A lot of our clients want their homes run like five-star boutique hotels. So the staff have to make it perfect. Hi. Hello. Come in. How are you? Very good. Nice How to you? see you. Lucy has been given 24 hours notice to find a nanny that can cook vegan food, ski, and has a spiritual outlook. She's had a few temporary positions in the last year or so. I think it's just whether it's sort of personality match. Hi, Camilla. Hi. Hi, come in. I'm Lucy. Nice to meet you. Lovely to see you. I don't want someone that, that does housework and doesn't look after the kids. I, I really want someone that's there for the children. That's what's important to me. Childcare, I, I don't mind. The only problem about me is, I, I, as you see on my CV, I do not have any childcare experience. Uh, hello. Hi, Maria. Hi. <laughs> hello, how are, how are you? Can you see me? Yes. <laughs> I can see you've got a lot of experience. Cooker. Housekeeper, nanny, and I love wine. It's good if it's a good wine, okay? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I've never interviewed someone who has brought a bottle of wine to the interview. <laughs> that, that's a first for me. <laughs> Hi, lovely to see you. Come on through. This is Heidi. Hi there, nice to meet you. I'm Marie. Come and take a seat, Marie. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I lived in California for two years. Then I was doing opera, and now I live and work here in London. It mentions here that you love to cook. Yeah. What do you like to cook? Your... Everything. Yeah. Would you have an issue cooking vegetarian food? Or... Not at all. Oh. If you show me the recipes, I would have no problem with that. Do you ski or...? Yeah, I do ski. Yeah. I love skiing. Do you have any questions for Heidi? Yeah, about I'd love to hear more about the girls. <laughs> They're obviously two girls. Very different personalities. They, they go outdoors a lot. They have a lot of energy, of course. I think all children yeah. at that age do. Either me or one of the girls from Polo and Swede will, will get in touch with you. We'll give you feedback, and then we'll let you know what the next step is. Brilliant. I'll see you out. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to meet you. And you. Parenting services for the posh is booming. Amanda Jenner is visiting a prospective client in need of her unique skill set. Going to meet Irene and her nanny. Um, she's got five children and she's about to start thinking about potty training her fifth child. So this is really an initial conversation with her and, you know, hopefully she'll use my services. Stunning house, absolutely stunning. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Irene. Pleased to meet How you. How are you? Hi. Nice to meet you. Please come in. Oh, my God, wow. I love that jacket on you. Oh, thank you. you. Like Beautiful. Millionaires Irene hires staff to help her raise her five children. I'll have two butlers. I have somebody who turned down all my beds. We have a driver, we have a tutor, we have a nanny. It's always good to have a staff when you're super busy like me. What beautiful, beautiful thank room. You. Do you like it? I oh, I love it. I have the best school, I have the best help, I speak the best way as posh as possible. Why would you be ashamed to be posh? I mean, if I can buy it like I'm doing, why not? That's actually one of the Queen's favorite. I have them in white. Listen, I'm just living a dream. <laughs> it's easy to be the Queen, actually. We're building an empire. We're building our life, you know? So in a way, I've realized the more help we get, my husband is free to do other things. I can't look after my house on my own. 47 bedroom. I mean, who does it? This is Connie. Hi, Connie. Connie Hi. and Mia are like the best friends and everything. She's the second nanny. Connie's been with us for eight years. She's seen me, you know, giving birth to four of my children. When I give birth, I say congratulations. <laughs> congratulations to us. 
You know, I can travel. I can go to places. I know they're well looked after. And uh, she's been with them from day one. My children, they were born with Connie around. So Connie is an extension to mommy. She's like an assistant and all of that. I'm not ashamed to say I'm too posh parent, no. I think um, as a parent, people need as many as much help as they can. And how long do you think it'll take? It depends on the child, how old they are, whether they're sort of responsive, they're walking and communicating. Um, okay. So who will potty train? Well, mostly Mona? Connie. I have to put my hands up. Connie is the nappy changer <laughs> throughout these days. How do you feel about getting someone like myself in? Trust me, oh, yeah. I'm a better wife. I'm there for my husband. I can go and party, cocktail parties everywhere in London. I can do it because I've got the help at home. Yeah. I'm not stuck at home. I'm no. not. I don't have to do a school run. Somebody else can do it for me. Why not? Oh, oh, she's this absolutely is more beautiful. This is, she's nearly ready to let go. <laughs> oh, she's so beautiful. Oh, Hello, so gorgeous. Beautiful. Hello, gorgeous girl. Thank you, so Hello. Amanda is here to help with your potty training that you don't know yet, but we're talking about it already, Mona, OK? But it's one of these skills you probably carry for a lifetime. So whatever the price is, <laughs> I'll pay for it. International businesswoman Heidi has flown successful nanny candidate Marie to the Austrian Alps for a 48-hour trial. I'm excited to meet Heidi and her family. I'm excited about the girls. I hope they like me and everything will work out. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How was your flight? It was great. Good to see you. Good to see you. I could not work without having a nanny. But I do travel quite a lot, probably every other week. I'm traveling to London or Barcelona or Amsterdam. So I need that childcare support and I need to be able to know I can leave my kids with someone I trust. Deep breath and let's go. <laughs> Nanny Marie is meeting Heidi's children, Amelia and Tilly, for the first time. Hi, girls. Hi. It's nice to meet you. Can I get a hug? Hi. 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 And where's your sister? Yes. Can I get a hug? What's your favorite cake? Chocolate. <gasps> How big? <laughs> Take this. Me. <laughs> I'm quite a strict vegetarian, so I need someone that, that can respect that. The first test for Marie is to take the children to the slopes. Family is super nice and the kids are really great. This is like living in a dream. Tilly's bonded with her immediately. So, so sweet, actually. She just took a hand and went with her. This is why you have a nanny. <laughs> this is the weekend, so it's nice that I can spend a bit of time with Marie as well while she's getting to know the kids. Get the other kids on as well, maybe. I'm coming. We said, can you take care of the kids for five, ten minutes and uh, get them an apple juice? Let me check if they have apple juice. They might not have any. And she bought them a Fanta. They went mental for two hours. They've never had a fizzy drink. <laughs> I think Heidi was a bit upset. I'm like, they had a Fanta. I hope it's all right. And she's like, of course not. We never give them Fanta. I'm like, oops. In Kent, South East England, Eren has employed Nanny Connie for over eight years to help raise her five children. Connie's connection to the kids is just like my sister will do. She treats them like her own children, and that's the beauty of it. We didn't have to, to fake it, it's just a fact. I think she loves the family. She's not with us for the money. You know, I love them. When I go to my two days off, I miss them so much it's because they are like my kids too. Connie, my nanny, is really, really nice. She usually gives us hugs. I usually miss her when she goes out for the day. Then I would call her a second mum. Yes, they work for you. Yes, you pay them. Yes, the money is in between you. But they obviously have to look after their own family. You know, Connie is a mum of two. So they do have, you know, a life that they, they sacrifice and to look after my kids. I I leave my, my eldest daughter six years old and a five years old and then my youngest one is three because uh, I leave them to my parents. They look after my kids because I went to work outside the country. Sometimes I feel because I, I leave my, 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 my own kids back home, but I think they don't understand why I leave them. And how often do you see them? Every, sometimes every two years. Mary Jane and Jenny Ann. 
Yeah, she's 24 and 22. I must work and earn money to support them. So you must be strong to leave my back, my family. It's different when you leave your kids like one year and then when you come back, they are three years old. And it's sad because the, the, ki the child can, re can recognize you, that's your mom. You know, they can't even, oh, it's your mom came, but they, they just embarrass and ashamed to come to you. You can't even hug. People think <laughs> it's easy to leave, to leave to leave your own family. It's very difficult, but for now, it's a long time, 20 years. Most Filipino women, we do that. We, you know, think about the future. I get my dream comes true because my, my, my two child is already finished the university. I have a friend as well. She just gave birth two weeks and then she went to work because she is a single mom and she leave her baby to her mom. Even she arrived, she had still milk in her, you know, breast. So, and then she cry when, when, the, when, the, babe, when, the, when the milk come out, she just cry because she remember her baby behind, she just left them. In the Alps, Nanny Marie is on her second day of her trial for her dream job. They are not just vegetarians, they are vegans, which is not so easy. This is going to be interesting. I don't even know if I'm cooking it right, if they're going to like it or not. The family's strict diet is still playing on Marie's mind. I was asking the girls if they want apple juice, and they said, no, we want a Fanta. I'm like, OK, can you have Fanta? And they're like, yeah, we have Fanta all the time. I'm like, fine. Apparently, they don't. Hey girls. Hungry? Like it? It's probably double the size of a portion that they normally have. They must have made a portion. Yeah, that's huge though. Yeah, normally I'd put salad and stuff at the side. Oh, okay. Yeah. Usually give them some fresh peppers and carrots and tomatoes, that sort of thing. Salad. Spoons. Yeah. We don't give them cakes and chocolate and sweets generally. Um, no fizzy drinks. Yep, my bad. They don't even know the word Fanta. It's not something we, we have at home. Having a full-time staff to help run your home may make life easier, but can put your security at risk. Nanny and Butler is a successful family staffing agency that also offers protection advice. Talk to me a little bit about, I mean, safety for the child and do you have any security measures in place that we kind of want to look after? At Nanny and Butler, we have many different kind of clients, ranging from royals, captain of industry, celebrities, professionals. They don't want their nannies to say anything. It is really a very secret world. No one wants to let other people know how wealthy they are. Many times there are celebrities, public figures, so we have to be careful. Wealthy Russian Victoria has come to see Paola regarding an issue with her family staff. I, I need some help from time to time with children and also when I'm traveling. And um, I hire some people I know myself, but I think I hire a drunk person. <laughs> it happens, unfortunately. Yeah. It happens. And um, she was on Facebook and she was by monument in my Chanel clothes, Chanel glasses, Chanel shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and she was showing off, and all her friends were giving her, you know, a hand, like, wow, wow, My God. let's go out clubbing in this clothes. <laughs> and then I realized she was going through my stuff, through my life. But you hired her as a nanny, as a skipper, which was her role? Her role was help. And um, after three months, uh, everything suddenly disappeared. My jewelry, my money. Oh, that's my terrible. My checkbook, my cards, my documents, children documents. Yeah. I kept those documents in my bedroom, in my underwear, with very secret other documents. And, and she, she knew that. She took it all, you know, and then the blackmailing. How are you person? Because first she asked for 50,000 and 40,000 and 30,000. Like, but you found her through word of mouth, right? Not through an agency. Many people, they think uh, recruit staff in houses is easy. It's not easy at all. It's not easy at all, and it's so risky. 
My God, you can really lose your money, you can lose your children, it's so dangerous. So you better pay a serious recruitment agency who does this job every day. So this was madness. I was so shocked. In Chelsea, family driver Mo is also dealing with a protection issue. I've got to show you first. <laughs> <laughs> This one in front, this one on your chin now. Yeah? No, don't touch it, just like near your chin. Yeah? Your legs Mo teaches forward. us boxing, but not to kill people, to like how to fight people. If I punch straight, no, not like that. Like this. Put me out, yeah? Like that. Then like that. Go ahead. Yeah. Go then. Do that. I went to an amateur boxing club in East London. I started when I was five. Then my dad used to do Kung Fu at the time, so I used to go Kung Fu as well. This ain't the plan. The kids are beating me up. Dad took me everywhere, football, rugby, whatever. But I, I enjoyed doing boxing, so a lot of discipline for kids. Punch. Keep my hand. Don't punch his hand, punch somewhere else. Oh, punch his eye. Oh, I beat them. <laughs> Is that it? Harder. Go on. Go on harder. See, she's nice. She doesn't want to hit me. Look. See? Agency Nanny and Butler offer a wide variety of family protection options for their clientele. I had uh, recently a position where there was a chauffeur slash security, um, where the mother felt that she really needed someone to sort of protect her and the family as well. She was particularly looking for someone with the ex-military background. There is a risk. Maybe they can have uh, the fear to have kids kidnapped, and I understand that. My ex-husband, we are not in good terms. Yeah, We haven't talked for 10 years. He was head of organized crime there. And from my experience, I'm very scared to hire anyone at all now because when you leave person behind... I understand. ...and you trust your house keys... Having now the big picture, I would suggest you to talk to our security like... guy. Mason Haynes is a high-risk security operative who specialises in protection for families. When you have nine zeros in your bank account, the potential for abduction for your children is always going to be higher than that if you have no zeros or a minus next to the number in your bank account, right? You can easily drop a couple of hundred grand a year on a good security team that's basically dedicated to the, taking care of your children. When we've got female operatives looking after the children of the great and the good, then we refer to them as ninja nannies. It just basically means that they've got qualifications over and above what a normal nanny would have that relate to security. Fearful of her family's safety, Victoria has come to Vauxhall to meet two prospective ninja nannies. Two things that you have to bear in mind. First of all is the weapon itself, and the second thing is obviously the threat. You've got to commit fully that you've got to throw all of your weight behind every shot, and it's got to land accurately on his head. OK, when you're ready, don't just concentrate on the obvious threat. Look everywhere. OK, you don't have to act mean. You're at school. Don't scare all the other mums. Get in the car! OK, stop holding your punches. Good. <laughs> We're just taking the guys through a uh, scenario at the moment based mm. on um, a child leaving school okay. uh, and, the, uh, and the bodyguard actually walking towards a vehicle that's okay. parked up down here. Um, and the threat is that there's a potential abduction. So you want all of your body weight to come through that hip, through that shoulder, and go into the target. What we want to do is we want to concuss the guy as opposed to kind of, you know, rough him up a bit. Obviously, we want to be nice and low-key um, in school. We don't want the child to have, like, you know, be bullied because they've got this bodyguard with them. So we keep it as low profile as possible. Um, so when they come out, some small talk, some conversation, like any other mum or nanny picking up the child, However, while she's doing that, she's also very aware of her surroundings. Do you look like ballerina? <laughs> <laughs> so what's your criteria when you select? Catherine's uh, ex-police. Uh, yeah. um, she did some security roles and she now works more of like a, a PA. So she's with her family and she provides sort of not just security advice, but also um, help for the um, mm -hmm. bookings and everything else. For me, 
I, I like the jobs where there's um, children involved. I do feel a bit, there's sort of a maternal thing yeah. that kicks in and it's, it's really important to have um, a good bond with um, the mother and the child um, so that you feel like you've got 110% trust in me when I'm out with your child. So how the girls look like in action and how they look in life. Now I question a second time if all those nannies in my neighborhood are really nannies. It's, it makes me much more comfortable. Back in Chelsea, Nina has invited her personal portrait painter into the family home. The crazy creative person downstairs, yeah. He's a very talented painter and artist. He did a portrait of me uh, and I absolutely loved it. Today we're doing a portrait of me and the children. Is this an average household? <clears throat> I don't think you could call this an average household. One day she's in Bulgaria, the next day she's having dinner at Sexy Fish, the next day they're all going off to, uh, is it South Korea for a fashion show? Um, so getting any kind of time together to, to organise a painting is, uh, is, is very tight. Before Artist Metin starts the family portrait, there is an unveiling of his last masterpiece. When he unveiled it for the first time in front of 60 of my closest friends, everybody in the room were just stunned. It's beautiful. Uh, do you know what? It's just that my studio is a, a lesser place because that's, that's not hanging there anymore. It's a capture the boss. Yeah, it says it all, doesn't it? I think <laughs> so. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> and I remember when, when I unveiled it, there was a bit of a deathly silence in the room for about what well, to me seemed an hour. I was just stunned. I didn't know what to say. You kind of reminded me of uh, the Grace Kellys of, of that era and the romanticism of, of what it is to be a woman, a mother. Please, can you close the door? Don't let them in here, please. When you walked into your room wearing that dress, I thought, I'm so blessed to be next to you. Um, I remember when you posed and you sort of threw your hair back. Yeah. And I had this uh, moment. Stop! Stop! <laughs> stop what you're doing! That was perfect. While growing up, they used to call me Christmas tree. <laughs> because I always used to overdress. That's always been a part of my, my personality, I think. This captures me in an amazing way for the next one. Because we're doing it with my kids, it would be nice to see the emotions between me and the children. <laughs> there we go, there we go. Look at me while you're doing it. Now, can you look at me? Nina's children are helping out with the family fashion brand by modeling the latest season. One, two, three. Okay. Smile. Okay, let go. Just debate between each other who's going to clean it up. No, I'm not cleaning it up. I said I'd rather leave it there and drive away. <laughs> Come on, look this way. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's one thing, OK, doing this without permission, OK? And you say you're going to tidy up. It's another thing, doing that. Oh, we didn't know it was an answer. Sorry, we didn't know it was an number on the door, That's so I would apologise. Okay, you can see. It's a garden. There's a I house know. behind it, right? I okay. I didn't well, realise. You didn't realise. She made no attempt to investigate. It's disappeared, man. It's well, smoke does that, doesn't it? it? But anyway, I don't want to argue with you. We said sorry. I'm mean, going to clear it up, and that'll be it. Good. All right? Let's clean it up. Anything else, I'll do it. But I'm not doing that. It smells like shit. <laughs> you say there's a hierarchy in the house? We work for Nina, so... It's her house. It's her home, so Nina decides what we do. So she's in the house to do the horrible jobs that nobody wants to do, like cleaning, washing, picking up the dog poo, like you can see now. One in four UK children now use private tutors. Worth a staggering £6 billion a year, the industry has grown by a third in the last decade. Most of the feedback from candidates are struggling a little bit with the fact that you're in Highgate. 
Paola Diana runs a luxury staffing agency that places super tutors with wealthy families. So, Alia, which are your ambitions? Uh, I want him to go to Cambridge or Oxford, and I would like him to be a scientist. And so you yes. will love him to become a Nobel Prize winner. Oh, it's <laughs> top of my dreams. That's why we also have not only good nannies and governesses, but also good school experts. Amongst some of the most well-respected super tutors is Mark McLean, who has helped some of the world's most affluent families. The term kind of super tutor is given to someone who can do a little bit more. Very often you end up being sort of the overlap of a coach, a mentor and a teacher. And they can charge anywhere from 500 to 1,000 pounds an hour. A few of the clients that I've had, the parents are world leaders. They'd be a king of a country. It's probably not ridiculous to say that a family would be spending a million per child. One, two, three, four, five, 30. Five. Good I've tutored children in some incredible places. Imagine taking them to the pyramids of Giza. You're actually making it come alive. As a tutor, you become almost their own personal David Attenborough. 110. Recently, I had a client where the, the child had 12 tutors, and he was eight years old. And each of them in their individual right was a fantastic individual. You know, one of them was editor of a, a major newspaper, another one was a, you know, a, a well-known sort of gardening expert and things like that. What was the last number you said? 42. Good. As you get more and more families moving to the UK who have almost unlimited funds, you know, a lot of them want the best. They want people with experience. They want people with good track records, you know, and they'll, and they'll pay for it. Living in their 45 million pound family home in London's Kensington, Russian investment banker Igor lives with wife Natasha and daughter Katya. Katya has been playing the violin since she was just five years old. The reason she plays violin is that we just established she's good at that. For an upcoming concert, Mother Natasha has enlisted the help of internationally renowned violinist Dmitry Sitkovetsky. This is very important for any piece of music. Because pulse is the, it's like a pulse of light. Am I allowed to ask the values? Oh, what is it, seven? That's eight. a good idea. Yeah. yeah, let's say seven million pounds. One more time, just to get to, to get the very clear character. One, two, pop, pop. She trains with good teachers, mostly because we want them to learn to work hard. That's our Russian way of trying to make sure they don't turn up into lazy brats. Along with several super tutors, mentors and experts, the family have employed Nanny Emma for the past 13 years. Well, she's crucially important for us, crucially. In terms of the keeping Emma long enough, I thought about carefully after a couple of years to uh, ensure that our relationship will be a long term. So I agreed to, to buy a house, for the f first house in her family, and she was absolutely happy person. It was the best investment I made in my life. Emma is the big influence for my 13-year-old daughter. I think my daughter wouldn't talk about oil prices or investment banking. She probably will come to me to talk about that. But there are things when I know that she would discuss with Emma. Emma was like a second mum to me because my mum was, she well, not as much now, but she used to travel loads for work. So she was like a second parent because she's very easy to talk to. So when I'm at school, I just like, ring her up, she's the first person to call about things. <laughs> it's very clear I'm the mother, and so responsibility starts with me and finishes and kind of stops with me. She's my partner. What's more important, the nanny or the work of art? Uh, nanny, of course. After one month of waiting, it's time for Artist Metin to reveal the family portrait. What have we here? What have we here? Hello, oh, Donnie. How are you? I know what it is. How are you? I know I'm what very it good. Is. Very, very good. good. Very good and very nervous. <laughs> Ma, I need you to come in and have a look at the painting you just arrived. When you have stuff for a long time, they become like a part of the family. Most of the time, I don't really see them as my boss. They've took me in like their own from day one. Uh, yeah. I think that's more. That's a painting. Okay. 
Hi. Stuff has been with me for so many years, and uh, I spend every single day with them, from I get up in the morning till I go to sleep. Are you ready? One, two, three. three. Oh, HD, isn't it? HD. HD. <laughs> I would say my kids are my everything. What do you think, guys? Do you like yourself? Yeah. But it kind of forms the heart, which yeah. obviously is the centre of the family. So. For the children, um, I would probably say the nanny is probably the most important person. After me, of course. <laughs> if when you die, you can leave. No. When you grow up, you need to go. No! When the posh have the staff like nannies or... I think it's because they have the money to do it. It makes life a lot easier for them, I suppose. Our nanny is very important. Very important because she needs to take care of us when no one's in the house. Every woman deserves to, to kind of also have a little bit of time for herself and um, it helps with having staff and having help. Definitely. Everybody should have it. <laughs>